Hello y'all and welcome back. In the previous video we explored one possible answer to the question where did the universe come from, namely that it popped into being uncaused out of nothing. Uh, in this video we're going to explore an answer which historically has been the predominant answer given by non-believers in God, namely the universe extends forever into the past. It's worth noting that this answer is also given by Aristotle who does believe in God, but Aristotle's God is not a creator God. Aristotle's God in virtue of motion keeps the universe in motion, but Aristotle's God is coterminous with the universe extending back forever to the past as well. So this view can be combined with theism, although in the instance that we're exploring it here, it is not. Now, there are a couple of concerns that you could raise against uh, this view or about this view. One we've already explored uh, a couple of videos ago, which is that it is inconsistent with our best current science. So our best current cosmological model is still what is colloquially referred to as the Big Bang Theory. Um, which begins with Einstein's equations that constitute general relativity in 1915, is developed into Friedman and Lemaitre's model of the universe, space-time uh, model, in the uh, early 1920s, confirmed by Edwin Hubble's uh, observations in 1929, and, and has, uh, again, since really the late 1920s, kind of been the dominant cosmological model. There are other models, of course. Uh, there's a pole uh, model of the universe, undulation, wave models, um, but this is still still the dominant model, and even models like the pole model have some form of a beginning. It's not the singularity, but it's some form of a beginning. In other words, they're inconsistent with this idea that the universe extends forever into the past. So tension with our best science, I think, is a not insignificant marker against this answer to the question. Nevertheless, there are perhaps deeper concerns that one might have about the idea of a, of a universe that, that exists forever into the past. As we explore this, keep in mind that possible answer that we bracketed earlier, that the universe exists necessarily. So if the universe exists necessarily, uh, then ipso facto, it also exists forever into the past. So we're, we're exploring kind of two different options in one in exploring this option. One grounds for concern about this response rests on concerns about the idea of an actual infinite. So there are different infinities. Aristotle explores this. Um, one infinity is what is known as a potential or counting infinite. So if I were to just start counting right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I just counted forever and I never stopped, that would be a potential or counting infinite. But what would never happen there is that I would go and infinity. Ah, that took forever. Let's go get lunch. That would never happen because, of course, I could always add one more. The other or another conception, the conception that we're working with here of infinity, would be an actual infinite. So a set of infinite cardinality. And that's the infinite to which one is committed if one believes that the universe extends forever into the past because on this view there is an actual infinite number of moments in time in the past. If, of course, the number of moments in time in the past is finite in any way, uh, then, of course, the universe does not extend forever to the past. There is a first moment, but the view holds that it does not, that it does, in fact, extend forever into the past. And there are concerns one can raise about the idea of an actual infinite. Most famously, and you may be familiar with this, concerns about the idea of an actual infinite were raised by the early 20th century mathematician David Hilbert, uh, perhaps most famously in his uh, thought experiment or illustration known as Hilbert's Hotel, which very roughly goes as follows. A weary traveler is traveling down a long and lonely road at night. He seeks uh, shelter for the night. And he comes to a hotel, and it's a conventional hotel, and has a finite number of rooms, say 120 rooms. And he goes to the hotel manager, and he says, uh, Hello, sir, I'm very tired. I need a room for the night. And the hotel manager says, I'm, I'm sorry, son, all our rooms are full. So the traveler goes away sad, but he's not sad for long. Because just across the street from this first hotel is a second hotel, Hilbert's Hotel. And Hilbert's Hotel is a little unusual. Hilbert's Hotel has an actually infinite number of rooms. The guy is justifiably hopeful. So he goes into the lobby, approaches the manager, he says, Hello, sir, I need a room for the night. And the hotel manager says, all our rooms are full. And the guy's sad and he starts to walk away, but the manager says, stop. I didn't say there was no vacancy. Hold on. And he takes the guest in room one, moves into room two, guest in room two, moves into room three, three to room four, four to room five, and so on, all the way up to infinity. Room one is now available, and the weary traveler moves into room one and stays the night. But before, all the rooms were full. 
Well, the next day, the traveler gets up. He had a great stay. Uh, he thanks the hotel manager, and he leaves. Hotel manager has this thing where he doesn't like his hotel looking a little bit empty. So he says, this won't do. So he takes the guest room 10 back to room 9, 9 to room 8, 8 to room 7, all the way back down to 1. Guest room 2 moves into room 1. And once again, there are no empty rooms. But it gets weirder. So this uh, traveler goes, and he really enjoys his stay at the hotel. has some nice amenities, nice comfy bed, I guess. And he tells his friends about it. He says, guys, this is a fantastic hotel. You've got to try it out. And he comes back the next night with his friends. He's a very popular guy. He has infinity friends. He has an actual infinite number of friends. And they all pull up to the hotel, and they walk into the lobby. I can't picture this, but they're there. And they say to the hotel manager, uh, we each need a room for the night. And the hotel manager says, well, all my rooms are full. No problem. And he takes the guest to room one, moves to room two. Guest to room two to room four. Three to room six, four to room eight, five to room ten, all the way up to infinity, since any number doubled is an even number. There's an infinite number of odd-numbered rooms now available, and this infinite number of guests, friends of the initial guy, move into this infinite number of odd-numbered rooms, which are now vacant, and they stay the night. But before, all the rooms were full. Well, the next night, they have a great night's sleep. They get up. They take their leave of the hotel. They say, thank you. Fantastic hotel. Hotel manager says, don't mention it any time. But he's got an infinite number of vacant rooms. I mean, he has infinite number of full rooms, but an infinite number of vacant rooms. He doesn't like that. That won't do. So he just reverses the process, takes the guest, uh, takes the guest to room 10, room 5, 8 to room 4, 6 to room 3, 4 to room 2, 2 to room 1. All the rooms are now uh, occupied, full once again. The hotel manager has it looking like he likes it, and he is once again satisfied. Now, if this stopped making sense or being coherent about two minutes ago or three minutes ago, it's not because of how I'm explaining it. It's not because of your inability to understand it. It's because of problems inherent in the idea of an actual infinite. And this is Hilbert's point here. No actual quantity, no real quantity behaves like that. No real quantity, when added to itself, is itself. No real quantity, when subtracted from itself, is itself. No real quantity, no meaningful concept, no matter what you do to it, always remains the same. And it goes to show that the concept of an actual infinite, while we use the words, while we refer to it, refers to nothing. It's an illusory and self-contradictory concept. It doesn't have any meaning. And yet, the concept of an actual infinite is at the core of the view that the universe extends infinitely into the past because of this idea that you have an infinite number of past moments in time. So this deeply problematic and incoherent concept, if of course these objections raised to the idea of an actual infinite go through, is at the core of this view that the universe extends forever into the past. This when combined with the substantial concern in my mind that it goes against our best science is, in my opinion, grounds not to consider it seriously as an answer to the question, as an answer to the question, where did the universe come from? In the next video, we will consider the final remaining answer to the question, which is, of course, that God made the universe. I'll see you then.